Good Monday evening and welcome to the NCW Life Evening News. I'm Grant Olson. Before we get to tonight's top stories, let's take a look outside our weather window. And not too bad a day today. Didn't get all that warm temperature wise, but boy, plenty of sunshine. And I was reminded today that today was the fourth out of fifth five days that we have seen sunshine here in the Wenatchee area after a lot of low hanging clouds and snow showers. Nice to see that sun. And as we take a look at the week ahead and our seven day forecast, we're going to stay about like today for your Tuesday forecast. And then we'll warm up Wednesday, Thursday and Friday before a storm system moves in with some rain and snow on Saturday. And then I'll tell you what, folks, much cooler as we get into next week. And we'll talk all about that and more coming up in your North Central Washington weather forecast. And now a few of the news stories we're following for you tonight. Wenatchee police say a hit and run driver sideswiped a small passenger car with his truck on Friday and was apparently carrying a firearm illegally at the time. The Washington Supreme Court this week will take up a Douglas County case that struck down the state's new capital gains tax and another $9.3 million in stolen unemployment funds have been recovered by the Washington State Attorney General's office. But first, our top story tonight, quote, I shouldn't be charged with anything. Those were the first words in court today of the man accused of gunning down his former girlfriend in a Saturday shooting along Badger Mountain Road in Douglas County. 27-year-old Dalton Scott Potter is jailed and facing likely charges of murder and attempted murder for allegedly shooting 37-year-old Alyssa Ann Longwell to death and then opening fire on a pair of witnesses. Those witnesses say Longwell jumped or was pushed from a moving vehicle about nine miles south of Waterville. After that, they say Potter stood over her and fired multiple shots from a handgun and then fired again at the witness's vehicle before fleeing. Longwell was pronounced dead at the scene. Douglas County deputies and police from several other agencies apprehended Potter hiding at a house on Mule Deer Road. He's not yet been charged but remains in custody in the Chelan County Jail. Here's what happened in a remote hearing before Judge Brian Huber today. They're going to read it. For your charge, all your information should happen right now. I'm not, I shouldn't be charged on anything. I haven't done anything. You'll, ex you'll explain that to them. That's what right. Want to do. That's all what right, you. let's go ahead. Let's go ahead with this. Uh, this is State versus Dalton Potter 23-1-000-10-09. Uh, Mr. Potter is kind of appearing by Zoom from the Chelan County Regional Jail, although he seems to be sitting in a chair Sergeant, do we have some issue with Mr. Potter wanting to appear or not today? No. No, you cannot appear. You can't? No. You're here one way or another. You can stand up there or we can be involved. All right, Mr. Potter, I'm going to have some questions for you, and then I've got some information for you. Would you please tell me your full legal name and your date of birth? At this time, is it against the law to not answer any questions? Well, I need to know your name and your date of birth. Can you tell me that? I cannot right now. All right. I don't mind having a preliminary appearance tomorrow for Mr. Potter. We're still within our timelines. Perhaps that's the better approach. I'm not going to do this dance with Mr. Potter um, about whether he's going to tell me his name or not. Longwell was from Kennewick and authorities say her relatives did not know any reason why she should be in the Wenatchee Valley on Saturday. They described Potter, who lived in Wenatchee until roughly 2020, as an ex-boyfriend. Potter relocated to the Tri-Cities almost three years ago. He served prison time in 2018 after pleading guilty to a domestic violence-related burglary. Wenatchee police say a hit-and-run driver sideswiped a small passenger car with his truck on Friday and was apparently carrying a firearm illegally at the time. 39-year-old Ryan Thomas Letts of East Wenatchee remained jailed today after the collision on eastbound Highway 2 near Sunny Slope. Police say Letts' pickup was traveling erratically and sideswiped a Honda Fit and then kept going across the Otabashan Bridge into East Wenatchee. No one was injured. When police met him at his home, they say they found empty alcohol containers in and around his truck. When the vehicle was impounded and searched, it allegedly contained a 9mm pistol and ammunition for several other firearms. 
Letts has prior criminal convictions that bar him from owning firearms. Well, the Washington Supreme Court this week will take up a Douglas County case that struck down the state's new capital gains tax. Judge Brian Huber ruled last year that the tax on capital asset sales over $250,000 in value in one year was unconstitutional in a lawsuit brought by more than a dozen wealthy plaintiffs plus the Washington Farm Bureau. The Supreme Court argued to hear the state's appeal, bypassing a traditional hearing in the lower appellate court. Judge Huber's ruling remains suspended until the high court renders its decision. Back in November, the Supreme Court said the state can begin planning how to collect that new tax beginning this April. The revenue would go to fund education and school construction in the state. Well, another $9.3 million in stolen unemployment funds have been recovered by this Washington State Attorney General's office. The stolen money was deposited into Bank of America accounts and a King County Superior Court judge has since ordered Bank of America to return the funds to Washington State. The money was acquired by identity data harvested through data breaches during the COVID pandemic. This comes after the Attorney General's office launched an investigation to find accounts that still had stolen funds at banks or money services like PayPal. While a total of $33.7 million has been recovered so far, more from other financial institutions is expected. Well, when we come back, Washington's Fish and Wildlife Commission may decide this week on whether black bear can be hunted in this spring. The Grant County Sheriff's Office this week rolled out the new markings for the agency's emergency management vehicles. And the City of Leavenworth will host its second quarterly community engagement night next week. I'm Grant Olson and you're watching the NCW Life Evening News. Introducing Alpine Air Man. Because every home needs a superhero to eliminate poor indoor air quality, send inefficient operating equipment packing, and cut high energy bills down to size. For heating or cooling and equipment replacement, turn to the experts and the superheroes at Carrier and Alpine Air. We offer the best deals on high efficiency Carrier products, along with friendly, knowledgeable service and incredible savings to fit your budget. Welcome back. In another news, Washington's Fish and Wildlife Commission may decide this week on whether black bear can be hunted in spring. Commissioners meet Friday to discuss and vote on a petition that would begin a process of rulemaking for any bear hunt. The state hasn't allowed a spring hunt since 2021 under concerns that bear cubs would be unnecessarily orphaned, but hunters continue to petition for a restart. The commission will also consider whether to acquire almost 350 new acres of land for conservation in Okanagan County. Meanwhile, the Grant County Sheriff's Office this week rolled out the new markings for the agency's emergency management vehicles. The three EM vehicles now sport graphics to help identify team members and promote the mission of the emergency management team. The Sheriff's Office took over management of the emergency agency in 2017 after a vote of Grant County Commissioners. Sheriff Joe Crete says the newly marked vehicles will be visible at major events like fires, floods and other natural disasters. The City of Leavenworth will host its second quarterly community engagement night next week. The event will showcase five city projects, including Phase 2 of the Roundabout at Chumstick Highway and 1st Street and the Front Street Closure Survey results. Those involved in the projects will be in attendance to answer questions and receive feedback from the public. 
All community members are welcome and pizza, snacks and child care will be provided. The event will be held on Tuesday, January 31st at the Fest Hall at 1001 Front Street and those times are from 5 to 8 p.m. You're watching the NCW Life Evening News. Coming up next, tonight's feature story and your complete local weather forecast. That and much more still to come on the NCW Life Evening News. Please stay with us. NCW Life Channel is your home for local sports with the Wenatchee Panthers at East Bont Wildcats right here. Coverage brought to you by Abbey's Pizza, Biosports Physical Therapy, Clean Connection, Coldwell Banker Cascade, Confluence Health, Dick's Heating and Air Conditioning, Global Car Care, Harvest Valley Pest Control, Highlander Golf Course and Grill, Kennedy Real Estate Group, Les Schwab, Sangster Motors, Save Mark, and Together for You. Follow all the action right here on the NCW Life Channel. At D.A. Davidson in Wenatchee, they believe your investment success begins with a personalized plan. A plan that is the roadmap you need to navigate your way to living your best years in retirement. D.A. Davidson can help you create a plan so you can take the time to enjoy the finer things in life. Let the financial advisors at D.A. Davidson help chart your retirement future today. Welcome back to the NCW Life Evening News. In tonight's feature story, multiple gun control bills are making their way through the state legislature, including one that would allow cities and counties to make tougher gun rules than those adopted by the state. Opponents say this would create a patchwork of laws for firearm owners to obey when traveling through Washington. But in a press briefing last week, Governor Jay Inslee said tighter controls are needed. Uh, given the violence we are suffering, uh, I am more inclined to favor reducing gun violence than concerns of, of that nature. I think the problem is so acute, we are losing hundreds of people to this carnage. What used to be a fist fight is now two homicides, and we're seeing that time after time after time in our state. So, uh, in general, I would be uh, supportive of an attitude to allow local communities to make this decision. I understand the argument against it, but we cannot allow this carnage to overtake our, our state. But let me just say, we shouldn't wait for the cities, right? There are three bills this year. Uh, I understand the uh, one bill that I'm particularly interested in that would require some basic safety training. Actually, I think it was the exec data committee the other day. It's made good progress. I'm hearing good things. People understand how important it is. If you're going to have a deadly instrument, having some basic safety training makes sense. And I'm, I'm getting good response to that. And I'm very, very pleased by that. But I do want all three of these bills to pass. There's no reason they shouldn't. Time now for a check of your North Central Washington weather forecast. Hope you had a great weekend. Really no complaints weather-wise. Temperatures were okay today. Another one of those okay days. This shot from late this afternoon overlooking the Wenatchee Valley. It's from our cross camera, our SkyFi tower camera up on Wenatchee Heights. And really not a terrible day today. We were exactly as we should be. 35 our high today. 35 is normal. Our record high 56 degrees and that was set back in 2011. We started off the day at 24. 25 is normal. So almost exactly where we should be for temperatures today. Our record cold 7 below zero. Brr, that was set back in 1969. Sunrise this morning 737 and it's set this afternoon at 449. Let's take a look at how our Tuesday looks. 
and it's going to be almost a carbon copy of today. I think a few more clouds in our forecast, but temperatures, as I mentioned, a lot like today. 36, Moses Lake, Afreda, Quincy, 35 for the high temperature once again in Wenatchee tomorrow. And then low to mid 30s up Highway 97, a cool one for OMAC at 32. Leavenworth, you will see about 33 for your afternoon high temperature tomorrow. As we look at tonight, we will see a chance for some patchy freezing frog, frog, fog, double area of high pressure uh, to our south, bringing in some clouds and that could create that fog tonight. We could see more of that patchy fog for Tuesday. Cl uh, clouds also in our forecast Tuesday. As I mentioned, high temperatures in the mid 30s. Getting you in to Wednesday, we will see, I should say Tuesday rather, uh, high clouds mid 30s as I mentioned. Now we'll get to Wednesday. Here we go. I'm so eager to get to Wednesday. Most Mostly sunny skies. It should be beautiful. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, very quiet, benign weather. High pressure slides up to just off our west coast, and that'll provide some pretty nice weather. Highs in the upper 30s for Wednesday. Getting into Thursday, that big bad area of high pressure still controlling our weather. We'll see mostly cloudy skies, though. Some of that cloudiness riding down the edge of that ridge. We'll see highs again on Thursday into those upper 30s. For Friday, mostly cloudy skies. That's where our weather weather begins to change a little bit. Notice the airflow beginning to come from the north. We will see a nice day Friday with highs again in the upper 30s, but then our temperatures begin to fall as we get into the upcoming weekend and the storm system is going to move through. Here's an area of low right over a uh, low pressure right over southwestern Washington. Could see some breezy conditions, rain or snow pretty likely in the afternoon and into our evening hours. High temperatures in the mid 30s and look at that cold air slow sliding down throughout most of the country, and that will be our scenario. Sunday, much cooler with high temperatures only in the mid-20s. We are going to see a lot of sun, but that air, and notice the pink, that is below zero temperatures. Luckily, that's to our east, but we're only going to see highs on Sunday into the mid-20s, and by Monday, teens for highs, single digits for overnight lows. Let's take a look now at that seven day forecast brought to you by Apple Valley Honda. And tonight we'll drop down to about where we should be for this time of year at 24 degrees. Tomorrow, a carbon copy of today, maybe some fog to deal with tomorrow and 35. Boy, I'll tell you, a beautiful day coming our way on Wednesday. Mostly sunny, a bit warmer, upper 30s. Mostly cloudy for thir Thursday and 37. And then as we get you into Friday, the storm system begins to move in on us. We could see isolated showers by Friday night. Our afternoon high on Friday, though, still nice at 38. And then the storm moves through on Saturday. Cloudy skies, rain and snow likely in 36. And look what happens to our temperatures. Sunday, sunny and much cooler with a high temperature then of 26. And that's a look at your local weather forecast coming up next tonight's sports report with Eric Granstrom and more as the NCW Life Evening News continues right after this. Join NCW Life Channel for live coverage of the Apple Blossom Royalty Selection Pageant presented by Cashmere Valley Bank on Saturday, February 11th. The countdown to coronation at 6 and the pageant at 7 o'clock. Coverage is brought to you by Coldwell Banker Cascade, Confluence Health, Harvest Valley Pest Control, and the Wenatchee Valley Dispute Resolution Center. Join us for the Apple Blossom Festival Royalty Selection Pageant on the NCW Life Channel. At Local Myth Pizza, we believe in real food, freshly prepared with only premium ingredients. Our cheeses are imported from Italy. Our sauces, dressings, and even our sausages are made in-house fresh daily. Featuring Northwest craft beers and 30 Chelan Valley wines and ciders. Family fun and amazing food. Eat local, drink local, and be local at Local Myth Pizza. Come see why Sunset Magazine says you can't beat Local Myth Pizza. Connect with us on Networked as we introduce you to the people and organizations who are leading innovation in the region. Get inspired, engaged, and networked right here on the NCW Life Channel. And now it's a sports update on the NCW Life Channel. 
And a happy Monday to you. The NFL field is now set for the conference championships after a divisional round of games played this weekend. Kansas City battled through an ankle injury by Patrick Mahomes, held on to beat Jacksonville Saturday 27-20. Eagles were just too much for the Giants in Philadelphia, 38-7 that one. Cincinnati overwhelmed Buffalo Sunday to advance 27-10. San Francisco won a defensive skirmish over Dallas last night, 19-12. The NFC Championship will be decided in Philadelphia Sunday at noon. On Fox, as the Eagles host the 49ers, Cincinnati will try to repeat as AFC champs with a 3:30 game at Kansas City on CBS. Well, the Seattle Kraken gained a point but lost a shootout to Colorado Saturday by a final of 2-1. to one. The Avs would take an early lead in the second period before Ryan Donato found the back of the nets. The game would remain at 1-1 heading into the shootout. McDermott, McDonald. Swallow it up and stopped on the second chance they score on the follow-up. Alex Newhook. Gerard to the far side. Held in on a change. Donato. Score! Ryan Donato steps on the ice and says, thank you very much. The final game before Christmas. Now Donato swings wide. Moves in on Franzos with a delay. Good stick by the goaltender. So close. And then once the stick came out, he wasn't able to do anything else. Evan Rodriguez moves in. Stopped by Grubauer. Going in slow. Yep. Puck starts bouncing, then lose. Jordan Everly is one for one this season. Mano a mano on Francois. High. He had him. Look for my angle just wide. Don't think he oh, got a piece yeah. of it. In the two hole. He'll swoop in on Grubauer. And score. Nathan McKinnon finds a hole. Colorado leads. Nice move. Good hands here for McKinnon. Fakes to the backhand when he goes forehand, but sliding it back as Grubauer open and is able to put that one in. Like Daniel Sprong, shoot the puck here. Okay, he goes wide with speed. He comes in, he slows down, he stops. That's all. Colorado wins the shootout. Seattle's off until Wednesday when it will host Vancouver at 7 o'clock on Root Sports Northwest. Well, checking the college basketball scoreboard over the weekend, Southern California's teams swept their trip through Washington with UCLA beating Washington Friday. And Washington State yesterday, USC topped the Cougs Friday and Huskies yesterday. Uh, Gonzaga and Eastern Washington women were victorious Saturday, downing St. Mary's and Northern Arizona, respectively. Well, the Eastern Washington men topped Northern Arizona by three Saturday. Utah beat Washington by 15, and Gonzaga held on to beat Pacific 99-90. Washington State couldn't hold a lead late at Colorado, falling 58-55 on a last-second shot. 15 on the shot clock for Bamba going up against Luke O'Brien. Bamba gets the friendly roll to give Washington State a one-point lead. Running that shot clock down. Shouldn't make a move until about four seconds left, Eric. Simpson with seven, long three. He hits it. KJ Simpson with five seconds to go. Buries the straightaway three. Last chance for Washington State. Bomba to tie. It's off the mark. KJ Simpson plays hero. And Colorado sneaks away with a three point victory. Coach Kyle Smith says it was a better performance than Washington State put forward at Utah Thursday. You know, we compete a lot better than we did at Utah. Um, our defense was excellent um, almost throughout. Uh, struggled with their pressure uh, defensively. Um, but rallied there and really proud that TJ gave us a chance to win that game. Um, thought we, you know, it's a couple tough calls and, and Muhammad was playing with uh, really uh, compromised physically, but he tried to give us, give us his best, which he always does. And, uh, just a um, tough one. 
That was a tough one. Turning to the Les Schwab Prep Basketball scoreboard from Friday. Brewster beat Liberty Bell 73-26. Lake Roosevelt mauled Manson 78-12. Okanagan better Bridgeport 84-18. Tenasket top to Orville 78-23. Wilson Creek down Soap Lake 39-28. Most Lake Christian edged Waterville Mansfield and girls play at 39-35. For the small schools, uh, for the boys on Friday, Okanagan beat Bridgeport. It was Brewster stopping Liberty Bell. Lake Roosevelt down Manson. Soap Lake whipped up on Wilson Creek. Most Lake Christian defended its home court, downing Waterville Mansfield 57-31. Well, for the boys on Saturday, Brewster beat Liberty Spangle 55-47. Liberty Bell clocked Cascade 87-46. Okanagan down Davenport 58-56. Manson edged any at 52-49. Some scores for the smaller schools on the girls' side Saturday included Liberty Spangle downing Brewster. Okanagan dumped Davenport any at top Manson. And Liberty Bell beat Cascade 62 -49. To 12. We broadcast the Wenatchee West Valley girls game on Friday here on the NCW Life Channel. Despite a spirited second quarter from the Panthers, Wenatchee remained winless, falling 71-31. I was with Grant with a call right here. Hill brings it across the big court strike, but that's where that double team came last time. But I think uh, Coach Dormeyer and another turnover, and guess who comes up with it? Jones. Well, I'll tell you, there's our MVP so far. Boy, I think she's played solid. For Wenatchee. Garcia Miller runs the offense. Here's a three for Bull. Wow. As West Valley runs the offense, they go high post. Jones is there, knocks it away, bodies on the floor. When Anchi comes up with another turnover, here's a shot on the oh, Stegman. Big pass, <laughs> big shot, three. And we're going to get a timeout taken by West Valley. How about that? The near sideline, they'll go again. Drive down and shot off the rim, won't go. Offensive rebound, we're going to get a hell ball, no. They'll work it outside. When well, got a fresh shot clock, so here's a there we go. Inside. And Stuber with the bucket. Under a minute to go here in the first half of play. Beautiful job by Stuber. Look at that. Oh, and lays All the way it up basket. Good. Nice ball handling and right to the basket. Also on Friday, Davis beat Moses Lake and Cashmere down Omac. On Saturday, Cashmere, the Cashmere girls whipped up on Quincy. Efreda eked out a win over East Valley. Davis dumped Eastmont and Moses Lake took care of it 67-27 over the Wenatchee girls. All right, let's turn to the boys. Uh, on the scoreboard from Friday, Omac down Cashmere. Davis won on the road at Moses Lake. West Valley came from behind to beat Wenatchee. We have the call right here on the NCW Life Channel. Now to Torres. Panthers need a shot up here to Veneros. Down low, Jelsing. Posts up, shot good. 51 49. 11 seconds left. There's Burley down court to Comstadius on the baseline, fouled quickly by Jelsing. Comstadius free throw, good. Now remember, no timeouts left. If he misses this, you only got 6.9 seconds to get the ball down to the other end for a three-point point. shot. Comstadius misses it. It's in and out, no good. And there's Molesky with the rebound. And that should do it, and it will. West Valley comes in and steals one from the Panthers. Our final score, West Valley 52 and Wenatchee 49. Many more scores and highlights on the website. That's sports. Grant, back to you. Thank you very much, Eric. And now let's check in with Dan Koontz for a look at what's coming up tomorrow morning on Wake Up Wenatchee Valley. Dan? Thanks, Grant. Tomorrow, Tuesday, is National Peanut Butter Day. And we're going to celebrate here. On Wake Up Wenatchee Valley, I'm going to spend the entire hour of my program consuming a ginormous jar of Jif Extra Crunchy Peanut Butter. Going to eat it with a spoon for the entire hour. Television history being made here tomorrow. Or we'll just do what we normally do and uh, dispatch with the peanut butter eating all together. Haven't made up my mind yet. We'll find out together tomorrow at 7 a.m. Live and local right here from Studio 42. Grant, back to you. Thank you very much, Dan. And that'll do it for our newscast tonight. For more on these stories and other news from around North Central Washington, you can find us on Facebook or our website at ncwlife.com. And remember, if you see news happening, we'd like to hear from you. You can send us an email at news at ncwlife.com or give us a call at 888-6295. I'm Grant Olson. Thanks so much for being with us and have a great night.
Hello, television family. Grab your cup of coffee each weekday morning and join me. I'm Dan Koontz, the host of Wake Up Anansi Valley. It's Wake Up Anansi Valley. It's everything you need to start your day. We're live and we're local at 7 a.m. every weekday on the NCW Live channel. News, weather, and sports. It's all here weekdays at 5, 6, and 10 on your local news source, the NCW Life Channel.